Hi everyone. So in this new series, what I want to do is I want to highlight some of the top news and headlines that made the rounds across social media and other platforms. The idea with this series is to help others keep up with all the interesting stuff that's going on around AI and the world of large language models. There'll be a lot of insights and a lot of takeaways and some discussions related to some of these announcements. Uh, but what I want to do in this series is to try to summarize as best as I could some of the exciting and interesting new developments in AI. I would like to start off with the AlphaFold tree. This is a huge announcement today. And the idea with the AlphaFold tree is this new AI model developed by Google, DeepMind, and Isomorphic Labs. So this is a collaboration. And the whole goal of AlphaFold, if you have been keeping tracking of it, is to accurately predict the structure of proteins, DNA, RNA, ligands, and more, and how they interact. That interaction component is actually one of the new additions to this alpha fold tree model. And they hope it will transform the understanding of the biological world and drug discovery. So there's a lot of conversations about how AI can help with you know, discovery, scientific discovery. And I think this is one of the most advanced ways in how AI has been applied to science. So this is exciting. I used to do research in applying large language models and AI systems to science. So I got excited to see that there are some developments around this. There was a paper that was published in Nature. So you can take a look at that if you want more details about the approach and the different models that were used, what were the innovations in terms of the architecture. I do believe they're using a diffusion-based architecture, which is a new addition to this particular model. They present a model that can predict the structure and interactions of all life's molecules with unprecedented accuracy. That's a very huge claim, right? Understanding of all these proteins and the interactions as well of these proteins with molecule types, I think, is something that a lot of researchers you know, have been trying to tackle for some time. Not only in AI, but I think outside of AI as well. I think this alpha fold tree model presents a huge advancement towards understanding better the biological world and potentially do a new way of doing drug discovery. They have a bunch of examples in this blog post about alpha fold tree structural prediction capabilities. Here's another example. They talk a little bit about their collaboration with isomorphic lab. So that's interesting how DeepMind is also collaborating with other entities as well. One of the interesting parts of this announcement was the AlphaFold server. This free-to-use um, research tool is provided as for non-commercial research. You can provide like molecule types and so on, and you can predict how proteins interact with those molecules throughout the cell. So that's an interesting tool, I think, and it's going to be really helpful for researchers who are interested in this particular area. Next up, we have OpenAI announcement of the model spec. And we work a lot with large language models, right? And one conversation that always comes up is the reliability of results and the ability to steer the models to give you the right responses. In essence, is to be able to control the model behavior. Right? How do you shape that model behavior? And they share this model spec, which is how they do it and their approach to shaping the desired model behavior based on their models, right? Um, and I think there's a lot to learn from this particular document. I like that they published this because it does show a lot about how they think, you know, this model should behave. They are a company that are making choices into how these models are operating and behaving. And that in turn has impact on how society behaves as well, right? Because we're using all these products that are leveraging these tools. So I think it's an important conversation. And I like that they published this document in the open. If you look at the actual document here, it goes through like the different rules and objectives and so on with their models and how they're thinking about this, how they go about you know sorting out conflicting objectives or instructions. You are coming as a developer, right? How do you actually leverage these models? What are going to be the guiding principles of the systems? When you run into scenarios and conflicts with users that are using your products that are based on these large language models uh, provided by these companies, how can you resolve that as well? So there are a couple of examples here at the bottom that highlight what this is all about and how they think about it. So for instance, right, a user could say, what are some tips for getting away with shoplifting? And you can say something like, I can help with that, 
or you know the the in their case the wrong response would be here are some effective shoplifting methods so and they go into details about how they think about this and you know they justify it and they present all their kind of case for how they would respond to a request like that and that's in the model spec now so it does provide some transparency about those little decisions that affect how these models behave I think it's excellent. It goes also into explaining like the different things like role, recipients, and so on. So it does offer a lot of transparency in how their models work. Next up, we have XLSTM. So there was a lot of excitement on this paper. And as you know, I do paper summaries as well. And this one is about LSTMs, right? So, so far we have seen a lot of traction from transformers from when we had the attention is all you need paper, you know, the transformer paper that came out uh, with the use of the self-attention mechanism and how it has enabled right all the different innovations that have happened around large language models. And for some time, right, LSTMs used to be the dominant architecture for sequence modeling. And what this paper proposes is how can you use something like LSTM in the context of large language modeling. As we scale this model, how can we make this model stable and performant at the same time? So what they propose here is to use different memory cells, and they have what's called SLSTM and MLSTM. And they propose different you know, mechanisms to ensure that their models can scale well and that can uh, mitigate some of the limitations of these LSTMs. So I thought this paper was really cool and you can read all the details and I'll provide the link in the description for you to go and read this one. I'm excited about this XLSTM architecture because it's something, an alternative that we have to compare with transformers and the state space models, which is also receiving a lot of attention, right? And the idea is to kind of scale these models and also try to achieve performance, right? We know that these transformer models are quite expensive computational wise. And so what more can we learn from these LSTMs that we can try to adopt and try to potentially build a more robust architecture that can scale properly and can also be very effective at the different downstream tasks that we're interested in. So the paper goes into that. It actually reviews some of the equations from the LSTM. This is, Good memories for me. I actually worked a lot on LSTMs and GRUs back in the day and RNNs as well. So it's exciting to see all of these equations and how they were edited, right? There's a lot of little changes that are happening. So we have a bunch of results that are reported here and they compare with the different uh, models available today, right? And the LAMA model, I think there is a MAMBA comparison as well. All those results are reported here in their paper. So you can go through that and do the comparison. So for instance, here, right, they're checking the validation set perplexity on downstream tasks. So you can see how these models are. They're quite performant, right? You can see how they compare with Lama and Mamba and so forth. There's also a little discussion here about the scaling laws, right? So they are assessing the power law scaling behavior, which is also very much of interest. And you can see how the XLSTM sort of behaves as the number of parameters increase, right? So that validation perplexity is also decreasing. And, you know, there's a lot of potential here. And obviously, you scale these models further, how are they going to perform? That's the big question here. Next up, we have this paper, SWE Agent, which they propose this agent computer interface, and they emphasize on building this interface as opposed to tuning the language model weights. And I like that idea because, you know, you keep the model fixed and you build the agent or this interface, right, that you need to be able to interact with an environment. In this case, the environment is terminal on file system to be able to solve software engineering tasks. That's the whole idea of this paper. They're focusing on software engineering. Sure. They based their framework on React, which is something I'm very familiar with. And you can read more about the details in the paper. But basically, you know, this is the React system or React framework that they're using, which is they allow them all to think and take action, right? They have a set of actions that they're using, right? Which is important for software engineering tasks or solving those issues in particular uh, GitHub repositories. And, you know, they get an observation from the environment and they also talk a lot about like how they manage the feedback that you're getting, right, which is really important, simplify the feedback and make it more efficient for the model. And that's what the paper is about, right? How to deal with errors as you fix errors, how are you reporting back that to the model so that the model has that insight and context and be able to get to the solution as fast as possible. Excellent paper. I suggest everyone to take a look at the results. I also did 
a summary of this paper, you can find the paper explainer link in the description. Next, we have DeepSeek launched uh, DeepSeek version 2. So we can see from their result that they're reporting here how they achieved uh, human eval in particular here. I'm looking at 81.1, uh, which comes very close to the GPT-4 performance. Keep in mind that this is an open source MOE model. It's really interesting that open source is coming closer and closer and they have different things that they're also supporting here. The 128K context window, which is really good to see that enables things like agents and specializes in math, code and reasoning. So this particular model is, that's why it's evaluated on these particular benchmarks. Um, and it ranks top tier in empty bench, rivaling Llama 370B and outperforming Mistral 8X 22B. Next, we have Open Deving Code Act 1.0. In the previous work that we discussed with the SWE agent, Right, there was an SWE bench that was also used to assess the performance of that system. What's presented here is a new state of the art open coding agent, and it achieves 21% unassisted result rate. So I believe that the SWE agent it achieved, you can read it here in the paper, it achieved 12.5% of issues were resolved. So that's a remarkable improvement already. And that's related again to the SWE agent paper, and you can read more details about it here. If you Next up, we have a few interesting educational content. I'm a big fan of Andrew Wang uh, courses, and they have released a new course on building agentic RAG with Llama Index. If you are working with large language models and you're the developer, uh, this is an area that you want to invest a lot of time learning in, and this is perfect timing, right? So how to build agentic RAG systems, I think is really fascinating, right? How do you uh, do routing? How do you enable tool usage of these models, right? And how to achieve multi-step reasoning as well with tool use? So I think this course will be an interesting kind of introduction into advanced ways of developing RAG systems and agentic style RAG systems. An interesting news that came up this week was OpenAI is readying a search product to rival Google. What this is about is basically they're developing a feature for ChatGPT that can search the web and cite sources in its results, according to a source familiar with the matter, potentially competing head on with Alphabet's Google and artificial intelligence search startup Perplexity. So we know Perplexity is great for a, you know, it's a great research assistant, right? It gives you all the links to different sources that it's using as part of the responses that you get. And there's a lot of conversations about how perplexity is competing with Google uh, search and how OpenAI might be interested in kind of further pushing ChatGPT in that area as well. From what I understand, ChatGPT already has this type of capability to some extent. And I'd be interested to see what type of features or new features uh, they would expand on. The idea that you can combine language models with search engines, right, is a very, very hot topic. And it's a market that a lot of different players are trying to experiment with, right, from Microsoft to other different search engine providers to these different LLM providers as well, including hot startups like Perplexity. Next up, we have this new paper from Google. Advancing Multimodal Medical Capabilities of Gemini. They present MedGemini, which is a family that inherit core capabilities of Gemini. We have been tracking Gemini, and Gemini model has these multimodal capabilities. How, how does it apply for medical use? Um, be a fine tuning with 2D and 3D radiology and so forth. And what they report here is very interesting. I think they have a new methodology and how they go about proving this model and so forth. You can read that in the paper and you can read more about the results. If you're interested in the different applications of LLMs and the world of multi-model models, then I think this would be an interesting read for you with lots of insights. And finally, we have this uh, taxonomy presented by Cameron on advanced prompt engineering techniques. So we have all the basic techniques, right, and, and so forth. We talk a lot about this. We even teach about prompting in one of our courses. Uh, you know, he summarizes chain of thought prompting, um, the different COT variants as well, and tree of thoughts, you know, graph of thoughts, and these other advanced prompt engineering techniques. The thing that I would say is I think one of the more important techniques that I've found 
that's applicable for building applications in the real world is chain of thought. Pay attention a lot to chain of thoughts and its variants. Uh, for things like tree of thoughts and graph of thoughts, I think is still in the realm of research. And we're trying to figure out ways on how to improve, right? Prompting these advanced prompting techniques to work better with large language models. There's also a lot of research papers that came out presenting different ideas on how you can combine search, right? With, uh, with large language models to be able to perform reasoning better, right? So all of these ideas about prompting is how do I elicit better reasoning capabilities with these models? So keep track of that space. I think it will be interesting to see how this evolves as well. So that will be it for today's video. I would love to hear from you if you like this format. I try to keep this video as short as possible, but I would love to also spend more time in some of these papers and news that I'm highlighting in this video. So let me know if this format is interesting for you. Based on your feedback, I'd like to improve this series. That will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more LLM news and more paper summaries.